کی بغیر لی گئی ہے Honorable members, let me say in advance to all of you who regrettably cannot catch my eye for this debate, to say it's not deliberate, but your colleagues who were able to catch my eye, did not comply. Most of them, most of them did not comply with the time limit given to them. A lot of them, the vast majority of them, 90% I would say, exceeded the time allocated to them. So I hope you, you understand. Let me start this afternoon uh, by saying I will certainly end the debate by four because of other commitments that I have, and I will start by giving five minutes to the Honorable uh, Cecilia Bangura of Karina District. I am Honorable Cecilia Mabinti Bangura of Constituency 65, representing the people of Banti and Sandaloko Chiefdom with the great Kamalo as the headquarter in Kayene District. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to register my concerns on a number of issues this government has failed in fulfilling. Some promises made by the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, among the 16 districts of this country, the position of Karene district lies strategic 
in terms of promoting international trade between Sierra Leone and neighboring countries like Guinea and Mali. Unfortunately, this road linking Makeni to the district headquarter town of Kayene, Kamakwe, Sabaka, and Madina Wula to Guinea has experienced a total neglect by this government. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, His Excellency the President has led this nation for years now. To be honest enough, any leader that meant well for this nation should have placed nation above tribe, party, and region. His action should have been seen paying equal attention to all regions and districts. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, after four years of his leadership, it is less than a year now to election. The people of Karene District are still waiting to see this government fulfill its promise by the road. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the time is true. I therefore move myself to suspend that. Thank you. Any second to that motion? I second the motion. All in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, honorable members. I want them to remember that over 9,000 people in Karene District voted for His Excellency the President's bill. And 60% of those votes are from Kamakwe and Tabaka area because of the campaign promises the SLPP made to them. However, They are still waiting for the campaign promises the SLPP made to them about the road. <laughs> this is because the past government has left, the past government has extensively left the funds for the continuation of this road, <laughs> including the township roads of Kabakuye. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, this government has placed so much attention on the food, the agriculture sector. <laughs> and the agriculture sector. With high investment scheme, M at improving on the high food insecurity that is ravaging the citizenry of this country. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, this threat, as, this threat posed by the food insecurity has the tendency to escalate the already challenges of health in or health insecurity the people of this county are grappling with. This is because, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Member, you all will agree with me that a human being that lacks the ability to afford a balanced diet is already vulnerable to, to several killer diseases. After the people. This brings me to the question I would like to ask this government. Sure. We are is our tomorrow rise. After so much talk about investment, that 
to be seen. No way out. In that direction, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I wonder when the SLPP administration took the reins of powers in 2018, they highlighted that they verified verified to us the major problem of this country. And I quote. They inherited a broken economy on course. If their assertion is really true, they should have they will have built the broken economy. So why don't begin talking now? So so poor they get. Grammatically correct. They they will have focused. On the broke, on the growth sector, they will have focused on the growth sector of the economy, such as agricultural food. SLPP treats women. Yes. yes. They are very good. Is it gender? Why well, we clapping for us? She started. Agriculture, mining, fisheries, and Mr. Speaker, I support my leader. Tourism. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I want to challenge short claims by the SPP that they never inherited a broken economy, sure. but rather a growing economy. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave that for another day, honorable yeah. members. The miss is variable. We'll leave that for another day. Thank you for your contribution to the debate. The miss is variable in this equation is their lack of capacity in pro properly manage the economy of this country. Mr. Manage. Speaker, no, no, no. this missing link, Mr. Ten Speaker, no. has landed this, no. this country no. No. to no. No. the following lamentable economic situation. Yeah. Yeah. Thousands of our youth, thousands of our young people graduate each year but do not access to jobs. Fear for price has, has seen unprecedented increment of 150 from, from just 2,000 years in 2018 to 15,000 years today. Honorable member, with that, with that, with that. Finally, Mr. Speaker, please, finally, our people are experiencing life threatening, abject poverty. Why they are still looking forward to the bread and butter? This government has promised. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, 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 my sister. Where's the boy? Where's the boy? Not your call. Is that good? Thank you. Significant. Thank you, good one. Very good one. <laughs> I now give the floor to the Honorable <laughs> Bashiru Siliki. <laughs> he will be followed by the Honorable Hassan Sise. <laughs> who will be followed? Oh, fire, he's fire, not here. Fire. Okay, let me deal with those two first. And please try and keep to the time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, I'm very sorry. My voice is my voice is bad. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I want to begin by thanking His Excellency, the President for graciously delivering this speech. Mr. Speaker, honorable member, having gone through this speech, Mr. Speaker, it is now extremely very clear in my mind that the president we have is a visionary president. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, in the last few days, having listened to honorable members from that side, it's very, very clear that 
most of our colleagues on the other side struggled to criticize this speech, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we are four years in governance. And it is heartrending to see honorable members comparing a government of four years to that of a government of 11 years. It's heartrending. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, in 11 years, they promised us agenda for change and agenda for prosperity. But Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, it is very clear that we are left with agenda for austerity. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, when we talk about roads, let me narrow down to roads first because I'm the chairman. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about roads and we say this is taking credit for roads, it means they have not done much research. Because I, can, I have said in this well several times that I still have the speech of the former, the late President Kaba. Most of the roads they are claiming for, we are inherited with fundings. Mr. Speaker, for the edification of this parliament, let me go to the President's speech, the former President, hand it over note again. For the roads, so when we see APC claiming roads, 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 to me the only road they, are, they, 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 they should lay credits on, Mr. Speaker, are the township roads with plenty kickbacks. Mr. Speaker, let me just give highlight before going to the handing over notes. On the roads they constructed, especially the township roads. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, at a point they claimed the economy was booming. They were busy wasting the resources of this nation. Not Mr. Speaker, honorable members, they decided to do township roads. And let me just explain to the honorable members and the public at large for them to understand exactly the way these roads were distributed. Mr. Speaker, point of order. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, for some of us who have traveled the length and breadth of, the, of this country, during the days these roads were constructed, it is clear the honorable is still very young in this parliament and those who have records. The honorable, Hassan, Hassan, the honorable from Magbrook and others will tell you exactly what I'm telling you is a fact. We are still young. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, for Makede alone, just Makede, not even Bombali. They were given 38 kilometers of, of, of roads. 38. Plus the, the four years of APC. Maboka okay, in Tonkolili district, the only member was saying, oh, we have not done anything for them in terms of roads. Maboka okay, alone was given 16 kilometers of road, the township. Losar in Poloko district was given 8 kilometers of road. Potlock no, township was given 80 kilometers of roads. Luge was given 6 kilometers. Mambolo in Cambia was given 5 kilometers. Cambia, 12 kilometers. Kabala, Kodo, 20 kilometers. Bodhi Street, Bota was given 4 kilometers. Bont was given 4 kilometers. Kereba was given 3 kilometers. Mbatu was given four kilometers. Moyamba, four kilometers. Kailong, four kilometers. Pujong, four kilometers. This was how they distributed road infrastructure in this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you now see clearly why the people of this republic rejected the only CEO, the only private CEO we got in 2007, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, let me go to the speech and let us, let us highlight the road they inherited. Mr. Speaker, with your leave, I'll read an excerpt of the speech. With regards to the roads, that's from the late President Kaba, as soon as the war ended, my, governor, my government assiduously embarked upon the tax. Maybe they have played it by that's technology. 
It's the speaker had a rule members. The following roads have either been constructed or are under construction. The Kori Bondo, Blama, Gendema Ferry Road in the south. Until now, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, that road is yet to be completed. That's in the south. Makeni Kamakwe Road in the north. It was inherited and completed by the APC. Kurubola Kabala Axis, Mr. Speaker, 11 years down the line. That's, that road is still uncompleted, Mr. Speaker. No, it was not domestic funding. Yes. With regards to the roads, okay, let me, let me read. Before this, I did not go to funding agencies. With, with regards to the roads, with regards to roads, as soon as the war ended, my government assiduously embarked upon the task of repairing and restoring the road network with the help of the Kuwaiti Fund, Badia, World Bank, African Development Bank, Islamic Development Bank, and the European Union. This is inherited roads. There is all of the roads. You did include the Lomli Tokyo Road. We did we did fifty percent of that road. We did the, we did what a lot of Kent. And just just the fifty percent you were not able to complete in eleven years. The hillside bypass road. We paid compensation. You came, you inherited that road. We paid compensation. We relocated, we relocated the people living on that road. And 11 years down the line, we're still struggling with these roads. Mr. Speaker, when you see APC claiming for roads, the only roads they should be claiming for, these are the township roads with a lot of kickbacks. And down the line, we are now repairing these roads. Mr. Speaker, when you have a visionary president, we should not concentrate. A visionary president is the president that looks into the future. Mr. Speaker, when, the pres when we are campaigning, the president told us that his parents will be education. Some of us, we are pessimistic. We told, Mr. Pres we told the, the leader of our party by then that that's so huge. But he had so much vision for the future of this country. And it's a president that doesn't rely on say, let us do development for winning tomorrow. And that is what you've been doing. You do development for vote winning, rather than doing development for the future. He said the only way Sierra Leone will develop honorable members at a meeting is when we educate the people, the young people that will take over us. At a point, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, it was clear that you can leave primary school Without, without passing the NPSC, and you go for a Beke class. You pass, the, you go to Beke, you don't pass Beke, and you go for what? You go for what? You don't pass what? And you go to university. You go to university, you bribe your way, you come with the first degree. You come, you, 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 you leave university, you come, you go and do master's degree. You have, you know nothing. That is how, that is, that is how the APC left the educational system. That was how the APC left the educational system. And that is why, till now, they are still trying to politicize the educational system. Honorable members, the educational system should not be politicized. His Excellency, the President, have told us clearly that we cannot, the benefit of education cannot be seen in the short term. We still have time. As honorable members, we are paying school fees for our children. The APC, they are benefiting. Are we not? You are benefiting. These educational programs we are making is different from politics, honorable members. It's different. We had expected the honorable members to have given the support rather than condemning it. We had not expected anybody to politicize education. Thankfully, we had the paramount chief today. He said, yes. This is a system that should be encouraged and should be supported by all. We have not accepted as a government that we have succeeded in all of it. But the fact that we have the vision to start it, the fact that we, we, we are preparing the future of this country, we should all come together. It is not every day you want to politicize. It is not everything you should politicize. I, I crave on your indulgence, honorable members. For the good of Sierra Leone and for the future of this country, let us support the educational project. I cannot go into details because of time. But we all know collectively as a parliament, 
that the chunk of our GDP is being expended on education. Please, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I will encourage all of us to support His Excellency the President because the people going through this educational process, they, are, they can be tomorrow members of the APC. They can be members of the SLPP, but we should not, for any reason, politicize. When I see and listen to members of parliament politicizing education, that was exactly what the former minister did. That is why we are where we are today. At a point, we, if we continue like this, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we cannot even compete with the sub-regional countries in the area of education. Mr. Speaker, it is only a visionary president that should think to us that direction. Or else, a president that wants to win votes will say, let us go and build roads. After 10 years, we'll rebuild them again. After 11 years, we'll fix them again. But a visionary president is a president that talks about institutions. And Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the SLPP, from time in memory, we are building institutions. And when the APC come, they use these institutions to manipulate their way. That is why when they come in governance, always, they don't build institutions. Rather, they use these monies to enrich themselves. That's why at the point we had the richest person in Sierra Leone, the CEO of their party. But our president is a president that believes in institutions and that is always building institutions, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the honorable member from Kono said, when we are passing the Peace Commission, a very sensitive commission that should unite all of us, the biggest opposition group, much out of this parliament, Mr. Speaker. How, can, how do you want to succeed? How do you want to take over governance when you don't believe in peace? We came, we called a conference on peace. We invited you, you refused going. We came, we said, okay, let us have a commission. You, you, you politicized it again and you walked out. Mr. Speaker, a serious political party should be in supportive on institutions that get towards peace. When we were in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we gave them the support. They were bringing documents in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, who we are supporting and telling them this document will be implemented by us. You are still very young in this parliament. <laughs> you are still... We supported them and we told them this, uh, this document will be implemented. How, can, how do you want to manage a nation and you don't want to participate in the process? Let's assume tomorrow you win governance, which is even very impossible for now. <laughs> which is even very impossible. And you still want to manage the Peace Commission. How do you expect us? How do you expect us as a party to support when you refuse to participate in the process? Why do you? Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I want to continue thanking His Excellency the President for this vision. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, our President is a President that was criticized by the media and other institutions before becoming President. But this is a President that believes in institutions and freedom of speech. Critical legislation has been pioneered by His Excellency the President. A president that suffered gravely in the hands of the media when he came, he had the opportunity. Some, some of you in the opposition, you ran away. He had the opportunity and he said, No, I should not use this platform to disadvantage anybody, but rather to empower the press. He brought to this house, Mr. Speaker, through his minister, the, 1960, the repeal of the 1965 Public Order Act. Mr. Speaker, that was the act successive government has been using to silence the press. The president who has suffered in the hands of the press said, no. Today, I have an opportunity to change this bad law. So, you guys remember so Mr. Mr. Speaker, I have members, I want to thank everybody in this house for believing in His Excellency, the President. We repealed the 1965 Public Order Act. Mr. Speaker, the death penalty. The death penalty. Because we, 
Mr. Speaker, the death penalty was also abolished. Was also abolished. I have told you before now. That, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to clap you. You are young. You are struggling. When we are on that side, the, the answers will tell you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the death penalty, the death penalty was also abolished. The death penalty was also abolished, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we brought the cyber security. Cyber, cyber security. That's also, Mr. Speaker, is a laudable one. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, as I told you, the president is seriously, is seriously busy with building, building institutions, Mr. Speaker. We have just created, with the help of this parliament, the disaster management. We, li we have listened to members of parliament heaping praise on the disaster management. Of course, that's a very good one, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the health system. Mr. Speaker, these are all institutions that we build for the development of a state. We have not said as a government we have achieved everything. We have told the people that we are working for the future. Maybe this generation has lost it, but let us lay the, the foundation for the future generation. Because the other countries that are benefiting today from governance, the, the, the foundations we are laid by their forefathers. And that's what the president, Madabio, is doing today, Mr. Speaker. In the health sector, Mr. Speaker, as I speak to you, we have recruited and given pink codes to more than 4,000 nurses. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members, for the last four years, I can tell you authoritatively that we have trained more than 200 medical doctors. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we have trained more than 200 medical doctors in the last four years. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, 16 district hospitals are undergoing rehabilitation in this country, Mr. Speaker. These are all building institutions for the future. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, ultra modern hospital is being built now, as we speak, at Jojima and Kailan districts. Mr. Speaker, dialysis services in our main, in our, in our main referral hospital, Codot, has been rehabilitated and is now in full gear. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we have also resuscitated, Mr. Speaker, the cost recovery so that we will encourage patients when they go, they should have access to drugs. We don't want a situation we are in where you will be sent to pharmacy where they are sick and in the process maybe you have accidents or you, you, there is a cause for you to die. We have resuscitated and through a PPP arrangement, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, Bo and Kenema. In the, in, the, in, the, in the shortest future, will also benefit from that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I can tell you authoritatively that we have 10 medical doctors who we have sent to specialize in the area of cancer. Mr. Speaker, they will be coming very soon. These are all building the future, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, as we speak, we have two advanced community health centers that we, we have built in, in Falaba. We've built in Falaba, the MPs of Calabar can attest, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we have now, we are building two hospitals. We are building two hospitals in Lomli. In Lomli. One children's hospital and another big hospital from, with the support of JICA, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a foundation. This is what a government that looks into the future will do. It's not just given roads for kickbacks. Mr. Speaker, in the area of electricity, for us coming from Bo and Kenema, we were blackmailed. When we took over governance, we were blackmailed that we will not be able to provide electricity. In this parliament and out of this parliament, we met His Excellency, we told His Excellency we are under pressure. He said we should withstand that pressure. He said, I'm not going to give cosmetic electricity to Bo. He said, we are going to do a permanent electricity for Buan Kenema. And we spent four years, three years on that. Our people demonstrated, he said, I'm not going to go and buy machines. He said, I'm going to give you permanent electricity. Thank you, Mr. President, for that vision. Today, Bo and Kenema are enjoying 
24 hours electricity, Mr. Speaker, honorable members. That project was started by the late President Kaba in 11 years. You were not able to achieve, and we achieved in four years. Oh. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, that's what a visionary president will do. A visionary president lays foundation. A visionary president is not a president who will go and provide electricity for vote winning. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, when we talk about electricity in Western area, the APC will say we we'll left light so too. Mr. Speaker, in four years, we will not destroy the electricity they left. It means, Mr. Speaker, and my friend, you are in, the, in your small village in Kwenadugu. Your father was there. You are only fortunate to be here because of the death of your father. So listen when experienced voices speak. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, Mr. 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 Speaker, there is no small boy here. Mr. Speaker, there is no small boy here. Mr. Speaker, please. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I think the deputy leader ought to know better. And I want him to advise himself and do the needful, as far as that issue is concerned. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member should know that the Deputy Speaker is speaking. The Deputy Leader is speaking. He's speaker for Deputy Leader. And the Deputy Leader is speaking and he should respect that. Leadership should be respected. Any Honorable no Member must be respected. No, no, no. Leadership should be respected. When you speak as Chief... That must be respected too. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, let me explain the electricity situation. When we, APC took over in 2007, it, we, we, we got the manage, the manage to brought car power and, 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 and the other machine. And Mr. Speaker, let me tell you what happened. We were here up to the 8th year of the APC room. And they were not able to bring electricity, Mr. Speaker. The last two years, when we started hammering them here on electricity, they went and they brought those machines. And what they did with the Kalpa and the, and the other machine, they kept the negotiated without pay. And we know governance is continuity. These are the debts we inherited. They should, be, they, sh they, should bear, they should bow their heads in shame if they say they, they gave us electricity. We have not destroyed any machine we inherited. All what has happened is we inherited so much debt. We, de we inherited so much debt from them. So, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I see you saying I have one more minute. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank His Excellency. I believe this speech will keep our brothers in perpetual opposition. They are going to be in perpetual opposition, Mr. Speaker. Because we used to tell them in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, that the things you are doing will haunt them. And they are, the things they did is haunting them today. So when I see the hunter now become, becoming the hunted, few years ago when we were here, we told you, if you don't listen to the voice of our people, if you don't listen, you will be where you are today. And let me remind Mr. Speaker before I end, for the honorable members who have been criticizing the president, you cannot bring a good man down. And let me remind you, on, the, on both sides, when we were in this parliament, last parliament, all of those who criticized the brigadier did not come back. All of those, I can say even on our side, those who criticized the brigadier did not return. I hope, I hope what you are doing will not affect you after nine months. The, uh, the former Deputy Speaker Kadates. I know you are not criticizing, you are very quiet on this side. Well, with that new prediction. All those who criticize, I hope you, it will not affect you. And with the turnover will not regret if you continue like that. Thank you very much. I thank the Deputy Leader of Government Business for his contribution. I now call upon. The whip of the opposition.
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to lend my voice to yet another presidential speech gracefully delivered in this well by the President, Brigadier Julius Mada Bio. But before I go to the speech proper, Mr. Speaker, let me first of all address issues that have come up during this debate. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable from Kono is not here. I want to start with what he said in this well. I'm not going to wait for him. He said it in this well. For the hearing of Mr. Speaker and the education of the House, let me make certain things clear today. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, the Honorable Member, the Honorable Member said he was removed as a mayor. But what I know as mem members of parliament is when stories are told, don't tell a half story, tell a full story. What happened before the removal? He didn't say. Now, let me categorically state here that there was an issue alleged, I repeat the word, alleged corruption case. So he was asked to step aside while investigations were conducted. Now, Mr. Speaker, during that process, a vote was conducted. There were 16 members of council. 13 voted for the motion and 3 against the motion. It's on record. Mr. So Speaker, I am on record. Mr. Speaker, point of order. I, was, I did not test. I, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we are on air. Fortunately, we are, also, we are also members of this parliament. These are issues we raised. How can, how can the ban be under suspension because of audit query? And you now go and move a resolution and you call your APC councillors to, 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 to. I am not to saying it. about what you so, are so, saying. So now. say the stories, say the facts. So that, stop distorting the news. Don't distort the news. Don't distort it. We were all here. These are issues we raised. The we issues are. No, no, so no, what no, is, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. So what is the truth? Both yeah. of you. Are saying, we are here. Wait a minute. No. Both of you are saying to the house, yes. half truths are very dangerous commodities with which to deal. No, Mr. Speaker, I am saying what's happened has not been properly told to this house by the member. That's what I'm saying. Nothing more. I don't want to go into that. What I'm saying is, let us continue, let us continue to help on this issue because I've had it once. Try, let us let us put it aside. It is not part of what we are we'll here. We will put it aside because there are half truths coming yes. to the house. No, exactly. I am Both saying sides. what happened so in Kono. Yeah, exactly. Sixteen members of the council, thirteen voted for the motion. That's all. Nothing more. And then, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to set the record straight. Mr. Speaker, honourable members, today the leader. The leader here, the deputy leader here, was talking about electricity, energy, that we didn't inherit nothing. The power car, the, the car power ship is still there. It is still being utilized point of, point of order, to supply energy. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The car power ship is I still there. I have been there. misquoted here. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. I, I don't go to you. I spoke about the leader, deputy leader of government business. He did not say so. Before I spoke. No, nobody have ever said so. Nobody have ever said so. You. Uh, you are listening. You are not paying attention. Okay. I did not say that. Uh -huh. I said in the last two years of your reign, uh -huh. because you are not able to provide electricity, you yeah. brought us car power. Yeah. That was what I said. I did not say we did not miss anything. No. Well, you said all of them were broken. No, 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 I did not say that. I, that's why I said you, we are not paying attention. You talk about broken. No, no, okay. okay. You've clarified. Carry on. So you withdrawing that. Fine. So as long as you withdraw, then we are fine. Mr. Speaker, as long as the man withdraw, we are fine. Meaning that what he said was not what he meant to say. That's it. So I'm happy. Let's, let's move on. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, honorable members. Now. Let me go for the debate proper. No, I'm going to proper.
what he said the parole can talk back mr speaker honorable members in the present the present speech let me start with paragraph three paragraph three the president said it is my great honor it is my great honor to lead this nation to lead this nation during this challenging time but i am here today not to dwell on the challenges i want to show just how far we have come and how resilient we have been to show my government's continued commitment to political stability and economic prosperity. That is what the President said in his speech. Now, Mr. Speaker, one thing that is very clear, the President spoke about sustainable or to sustain economic prosperity, which we all know we want in this country. We agreed. And then he spoke about putting measures in place to reduce inflation to single digits. Yes, we want to reduce inflation to single digits. Have we achieved that? Inflation is still at 24%, which has been agreed upon that that is where inflation rate is at. And measures that are supposed to be put in place to correct the economic malaise. Who has agreed on that? 22%, sorry, Mr. Speaker, not 24. Uh -huh. 22. 22. The gap between 22 and 18 is still great. But, Mr. Speaker, what I'm trying to say here is the President was saying we want to reduce inflation to single digits. We are still at 22. We are still at 22. And one of the measures that have been put in place to reduce or to arrest inflation is the attempt by the bank governor to introduce redenomination. Mr. <coughs> Speaker, the honorable member from Magoroka is a very senior member of this house. He's a very senior member. And he had attended all of the meetings we have held with the bank governor. And the bank governor did not tell anybody in this house that he is bringing the single. Um, we are we are redenominating because we want to reduce inflation. That's not right. God bless you. Okay. Now, the honourable member from from Bauma is saying that the bank governor didn't say so. Now, one of the main reasons for redenomination is to control inflation. Let him deny that. No, deny that now. Mr. Speaker. No, 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 no. No, deny that. Mr. Speaker. We are objecting to what I'm saying. Mr. Now deny that putting a measure of that nature in place is not part of hotel inflation. Mr. Speaker, that was not what was told to Rosa. No, I'm not saying what was told. I'm telling about are you, are when policies are put in place, what is the objective outcome? The expected outcome. No, Tell no. me, that's what I'm saying. Mr. Speaker, you are a very senior member of this house. Yes. I keep reminding you. Yes. You it is not only what is being said, it uh, is the expected he's objective. A, he's, he's a very senior member of this house. He's a very, very senior member of this house. Uh -huh. So when you make statements, you should make statements of fact. Yes. You should make statements of so fact. Uh, uh, honorable yes. members, no, no. honorable members, uh, this banter between the two of you. Uh -huh has very little to do very little to do with the debate on the presidential address yes whilst you are adjusting yourselves to bring yourselves back to what the real debate is about uh -huh. i'm standing the house down for 10 minutes <laughs> are you ready I say with you. Would I tell you? They call you for come. Would I tell you? People are not at all.